Welcome to Build Out, where real engineers face off building fake products. Today's challenge, a virtual earth. I'm Renan Meyer, the perpetual winner, which means this is Colt McCandless, the only one of us who's actually built a virtual world. So whose earth rocks? Find out now on Build Out. You know the uh, Northern Hemisphere points up, right? Not in my world. Southern Hemisphere forever. Influenced by Neil Stevenson's global metaverse, my virtual Earth builds on Google Earth to build a fully interactive global virtual environment based on real-time updates returned from millions of drone-based sensors deployed all across the physical world. We collect environmental data from millions of basketball-sized autonomous drones with environmental sensors, 360-degree LiDAR, and cameras. When you log in, everything will look and feel as though you were actually there, except all the people will be replaced with virtual inhabitants. So let's start with the balloon drones. I'm gonna build them with Android things as a software platform and add TensorFlow models to control the autonomous flight and privacy algorithms that'll remove people from the camera images. We're gonna send those images and the LiDAR data into Google Cloud Storage buckets and use PubSub to send notifications about those new uploads to a specialized containerized application hosted as a Kubernetes service. That will spin up or horizontally scale as many copies of my application called pods that I need to process the incoming queue of images. The rate and scale of incoming imagery will vary over time, effectively creating a queue of data to be processed. We can use preemptible VMs here to save significant costs. For the real-time sensor data, we'll also use PubSub, this time to publish, stream, and throttle data from each sensor, guaranteeing it's delivered into Dataflow. Dataflow is a serverless, fully managed data processing service that lets us use the Apache Beam SDKs to perform continuous computation over an incoming data stream. We're gonna use it here to create a moving window over the data, combining the results of multiple nearby drones over a fixed period to calculate an accurate topographic map of environmental conditions which it will then publish as a new PubSub stream, which in turn triggers another Kubernetes service. This container behind the service is designed to process the environmental sensor readings, also using preemptible VMs to create our virtual climate and weather. The process results from both our Kubernetes analysis services are then stored in Spanner. Spanner's strong consistency and horizontal scalability is critical in a virtual environment that can be modified by both real-world changes and changes made by globally distributed users. Another Kubernetes service takes all the virtual world data and combines it to construct a server-based interactive virtual environment. The client side is built as an Android app. The app will have a Daydream UI to provide the immersive environment. We'll keep an open socket with the server to receive updates and we'll send back any changes we make to apply them server-side to Spanner so that it can then be reflected across all of the other clients. The speech recognition and translate APIs ensure everyone in the virtual Earth can communicate in real time, no matter what their native language. And finally, we send all the user analytics to BigQuery. We use streaming inserts so we can analyze how people are interacting with our virtual Earth and create a data studio dashboard to keep track of current usage patterns over time. There you have it. Do you want to escape a world in which red balloons float on every street corner? Try my virtual world. Well, all right, nice to see you go first for a change. How'd that feel? It felt good. It was nice not to be constrained by your architecture for a change. You ready to take a swing? Listen, I got paid for the better part of a decade to make video games. Let's get this party started. Now, my build isn't expecting you to run around in a realistic 3D environment. If uh, Rado had ever read any real sci-fi, he'd know that's not how this works. In real sci-fi, they sit down, jack in, and start running around in a virtual space. So that's what we're gonna build, a virtual space. My metaverse is a virtual reality MMORPG. Your player can explore the wonders of my beautifully rendered fantasy world with a pet dragon by your side. My world looks better than the real world, so we don't care about Rado's real world, and we're gonna ditch all the sensor stuff that's used to create those 3D environments. Uh, yes, even the real-time weather stuff. See, if I live in Seattle and it rains all the time, the last thing I want to do is go into a game where it's raining. So let's get rid of all of that. Now, I like the babblefish idea of translation and speech. Uh, that's actually super cool. So I'm gonna table that for now so we can get to the meat of things. This leads us with a few overlapping pieces. Uh, first off, yeah, gotta agree that Daydream running on Android is the best place for this. However, Daydream by itself is not a proper game engine. I'm going to use Unity to act as a client-side game code interface between the user and the Daydream system. This also means that for our coding, scripting, and artwork, they'll all be in a file format that Unity can understand. 
Now we're gonna roll the dice on this one and say that along with our content generation, we'll end up with some sort of system or governing body that decides how and where new zones and regions are added. We're also going to need an update staging area uh, where new content and fixes can be stored and pushed to the clients and servers. We'll use a combination of spanner and cloud storage to hold both the relational items as well as the binary data. We'll also put in a GCF front end, which allows the client to check for updates and get a list of the things it needs to connect to in cloud storage to download and update. And just to make sure that you are who you say you are, we're going to add an App Engine front end instance, which will leverage Cloud IAM to authenticate and identify the user and communicate with the account management database, which uh, may include some sensitive information like uh, billing and contact data. For my application, we're going with App Engine Flex. Uh, for some services, I can just use the provided runtimes, but I can also customize it with my own Docker images if we need some specific functionality. Uh, by the way, this whole thing is very important if we're trying to make a metaverse level game engine. As a user enters a game zone, we'll figure out their closest region that we're deployed in and connect them directly to a world shard that's backed by a GAE Flex instance. These world shards will help align things like a player and NPC movement and keep all the attached clients coordinated so you don't see people clipping through walls. Now, along with that, we'll have a separate game service, which is hosted on another cluster. This is responsible for things like uh, trades, auction houses, guilds, and some basic types of combat organization. To accomplish all that, we'll synchronize the state between the instances using the awesomeness of Cloud Spanner. Now, another great reason to use App Engine Flex is that it has horizontal scaling without having to worry about cluster resource constraints. So that combined with Spanner means that I can scale to the levels I need without having to page a bunch of SREs to punch a hole in the wall and plug in new servers in the middle of the night. Now for situations where we're using custom Docker images, we'll also add a path to the container registry to host new container images to be used for these services. Uh, otherwise, we can handle service code deployments through standard rollout processes. Now, finally, let's add that chat service. Much like Rado's build, I like the idea of adding auto translation systems in there. I actually think he got that part right. So there you have it, a somewhat modern approach to building, scaling, updating, and interacting with a massive metaverse environment. And with the time I have left, let's talk about how to add things like microtransactions, in-game advertisements, and a hotkey that'll bring food to your door so you don't even have to leave the game. <laughs> Just uh, couldn't resist, could you? Yeah, I'm a creature of habit. Now, it's your turn to decide which build was better. My transformative rendering of our world, a boon to science and knowledge and understanding, and cults, mildly addictive MMORPG. Your build was so convoluted, I was expecting you to put a 3D printer inside VR. In any case, it's not up to us. It's up to you, the viewer. Leave a comment below the video to say which one of our builds is better. And don't forget to check out the Build Out podcast, where we take a deep dive into the technology behind these builds. Thanks for watching. I'm Redemeyer. And I'm Colt McCandless. Always remember, Perf Matters.